BP announcing this week it will pay a record four and a half billion dollar settlement over the Gulf oil spill in the meantime. Two rig workers have been charged with manslaughter and the deaths of 11 other workers. Their attorneys say they're being scapegoated by the Department of Justice. Do they have a point on that? But first, does BP's record settlement fit their offense? Joining us now is defense attorney Doug Burns, civil attorney Vicki Ziegler, and adjunct professor at Fordham Law School. All right, Doug, let me start with you. Sure. $4.5 billion. Yes in which the company is essentially pleading guilty to criminal charges. Yep. But my goodness, given the massive damage to the Gulf, the loss of life, 11 workers were yes. killed. And you juxt that, juxtapose that, the amount of money, the profits that yes. BP makes. Last year alone, they made $25.8 billion in profits. Right. Does $4.5 billion fit the crime? I don't think you can isolate it. That's the problem. I don't really have a strong editorial opinion per se. However, let me say this. They've spent $14 billion on cleanup efforts, apparently. Yeah. They've paid $7.8 billion to individuals, businesses, and others. They project another $7.8 billion, Greg, apparently. Um, and, by the way, this criminal settlement with DOJ, put that to the side, there's still potential civil liability looming on the landscape. All right. My sense is you're thinking, yeah, okay, maybe it's okay. Well, I don't want to say that. W what do you, <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Vicki, what do you yeah. think? Take a position here. Tip of the iceberg. I think this is just the beginning. We know that they're going to face civil penalties in the billions as well, so everything's going to be adding on. This could be in totality a $50 billion tab for this unfortunate fortunate, catastrophic disaster. So I think this is just the beginning. Um, I don't feel sorry for them. And I think it's time to really own up to what they right. actually did. Um, now let's talk about the two company employees mm -hmm. who are now charged with manslaughter mm -hmm. and the death of 11 workers on that oil rig. Mm -hmm. One of their attorneys is saying, you know what, they're just being victimized as scapegoats here. In fact, let's put up on the screen one of the quotes from the lawyer. It is almost inconceivable that any fair-minded person would blame this hard-working and diligent man for one of the most catastrophic events in the history of the oil business. Doug? Well, I was never a big fan, and I'm still not, of that type of charge. I've been in construction accidents, scaffolding accident, criminal investigations a number of times. Um, and generally, fortunately, in those instances, nobody was charged. But you can bring an involuntary manslaughter charge I don't necessarily like it. I looked at the indictment, actually. They charge him with involuntary manslaughter right. and then Siemens manslaughter under federal law, which is interesting. Yeah. What, what is this, like gross recklessness and, and indifferent yeah. to human life? Right, right. Unlawful manner or omission. And the question is, what? who actually can you blame? Is there a proximate cause element here? Are they going to be blaming other people, or was it these two mm -hmm. individuals? Was it their culpability that led to the deaths? And remember, already BP has already uh, pled guilty on the criminal side to 11 counts yeah. of manslaughter. So how is that going to dovetail into these charges? Well, the, listen, DOJ, Doug, is still investigating. They could mm -hmm. criminally charge others. No, there's no question about mm -hmm. that. And as a matter of fact, in some of the media articles um, that was raised, you know, another issue, Greg, I suppose, is, which I think is a bit of a red herring, you know, does the uh, plea by the corporation then in some way impact mm -hmm. or foreclose? Is that admissible evidence? Well, according um, to one expert I spoke with, he said no, not. and I agree with him, actually. Likely not. Because no conspiracy, Greg. Yeah, and that's the prejudicial the effect would, would outweigh, outweigh any probative I value, think so, yeah. which is the standard right. in a court Correct. of law for admission. Absolutely. Rule 403. Yes. Uh, yeah, I remember it well. <laughs> uh, former BP executive David Rainey is charged mm -hmm. with something different, not manslaughter, yes. but obstruction of Congress and making false statements, withholding information yes. about how much mm -hmm. of the oil was really gushing from the well. Mm -hmm. Now, that's an easier case to prove, isn't it? Yes, and I'm outraged at the misstatements, the falsification of information that was given to Congress under oath. And you know why they did it? Because they didn't want to be affected by the Clean Water Act. The penalties quadruple for more barrels of oil that are spilled. Uh -huh. They knew it and they did it. And they were trying to save deep pockets and that is unacceptable. Doug, do they probably have the goods on Rainey? 
Depends on the paper trail. In other words, if you can get your hands on one document that says, look, you got to understate this thing, you got to downsize it, then yeah. he's going to be dead in the water. Otherwise, but if it's only a document he didn't read, he can always say, hey, of I didn't see that doc. Well, yeah, that's what most CEOs say, Greg. Wait, but wait a second. <laughs> when they're lying under oath. Well, Greg, 5,000 <laughs> gallons versus, uh, you know, 66 gallons yeah. a day. It's Big a huge difference. difference. This is not like a typo. I mean, that's what we're talking about, yeah, right? right? You could agree with that. No, no, though. I agree with that. Okay. I do. All right. Vicki Ziegler. Doug Burns, good to see you both. Thanks, Thank you, Greg. Thank you. Heather?